So I hope that you guys are doing well. This week we are going to look at energy transfer in electrical systems. So as always I have a little bit of a positive note for you guys. Knowledge is like a garden. If it is not cultivated it cannot be harvested. That's an unknown African proverb. So this week we will start looking at energy transfer in electrical systems. You will also be introduced to the FET simulators where you will be able to build your own circuits. So success criteria. In this module, we will learn more about the nature of electricity. Why, when you flick a switch, does a light come on? I will be demonstrating several experiments throughout this module related to electricity. For now, we will start by learning about the components of an electrical circuit and then examine the different effects electricity, including heat, magnetism, and electrolysis have. So day one, look at the slides titled electric circuits and work through it. And obviously you guys are going to be utilizing this video. I'll help you with the slides. And then also look at the homework uh, section titled investigating the electric circuit of a torch. That's quite a nice one. And then lastly at the end of this video, I will show you the answers to last week's homework. All right, let's jump into it. First of all, let's have a look at our keywords. As you can see, our first word is conductor. That is material that transmits electricity or electrical currents. Then we have electric current, the flow of charges along a conductor in a closed circuit. What is a closed circuit? A closed circuit is a complete pathway through which current is flowing. Cells the source of power in an electric circuit. Two or more cells, very important, that is then called a battery. An open circuit, that is when the pathway going through the current is flowing when that is open, so that it doesn't allow for the circuit to be closed and flowing. Resistor, a material that offers resistance to the current or slows down the flow of charge. It is it diverted energy, some of this is useful energy, and some is wasted energy. Now, if something is conductive, it allows the flow of electricity. Insulating, not allowing the flow of electricity. Then we have in series, if your components of the circuits are connected in the same pathway, meaning that the electrical current flows behind one another. Right, that's your keywords. Let's now jump over to our slideshow. So for this week, electric circuits, the energy transfer in electrical system is as follows. You know that in grade seven, you've learned how electricity can be generated in power stations. Uh, the electricity is transferred to the national supply grid, which allows us to switch on the television at home or cook our meals on a stove. Electricity is very useful, but what is it exactly? In this module, we will learn more about the nature of electricity. Why, when you flick the switch, does the light come on? I will be demonstrating several experiments throughout this module related to electricity. But for now, we will start by learning about the components of an electrical circuit and then examine the different effects electricity, including heat, magnetism and electrolysis have. First, electric circuits. Electric current is a constant movement of negative charge from an energy source along a conductor. Some devices such as a light bulb or a resistor wire in an oven require electric current to work. An electric circuit, that is a system for transferring electrical energy. The potential chemical energy in the cells is transformed into electrical energy. The electrical energy is then used to make something such as a light bulb or a computer work. An electric circuit must have a complete conducting pathway for electricity or electric current. 
a number of components are connected together in this pathway. If the pathway is broken, such as a switch, the circuit will not work. As you can see here, you all know what a uh, battery looks like. Now, here's the symbol for a cell. You all know what a light bulb looks like. There's a symbol for a lamp or a light bulb. Then that's a switch. There's a symbol. And then your cable is just a drawn line. An electric circuit consists of current moving from one terminal of the source of energy, your cells, along conducting material, your wires, through a device, filament of an incandescent bulb, back to the other terminal of the source of energy, your cells. The flow of charges in a closed circuit from the negative terminal of a cell through the circuit to the positive terminal of a cell is called current. The charges transfer energy to the parts of the circuit that require electrical energy. The electrical energy is transformed into other forms of energy, such as heat and light. If the energy source runs out of chemical energy, the circuit will not work. The cell provides the energy for the circuit. The voltage measured over a cell indicates how much energy the cell can deliver for a certain amount of charge. Components of an electric circuit, a source of energy, that's your cells. Um, the cells are the energy source. A cell has a positive side and a negative end. The current flows, very important, from the negative end through the closed circuit all the way back to the positive end of a cell. So negative to positive. Components of electric circuit continue. The conductive wire. The wire in electric circuit is called the conductor. There must be no gaps in the conductor. A gap can be created with a switch. If the switch is off, the circuit is an open circuit and the current cannot flow through the circuit and light up the bulb. If the switch is uh, in the on position, the circuit is closed and the current can then flow again. A resistor, that is a device made of materials that opposes or restricts the flow of charge in a circuit. Resistors have an influence on the amount of current flowing through a circuit. Some resistors can heat up to provide a useful output energy. For example, the element in a kettle that provides heat or the filament in a light bulb that provides light. Now, this is the last bit of our slideshow. I hope you guys found this uh, interesting. Let us go back all the way to our class. Okay, so we have gone through our uh, slideshow. You've seen the keywords. Then, very important, here is your homework activity for day two. Please have a look. You will need a torch that requires two or more cells. Uh, cells for the torch. Take the torch apart. We will do this in class next week, not this week, next week. And I want you to try and see if you can answer these questions already. Let's have a look at the FET simulators. So obviously FET simulators, it's free, it's online. Once you Google FET simulators or you use the link on Google Classroom, you'll get to this page. Just click on intro. Then on the left hand side, you will see that you can either work with the pictures of the different uh, elements or you can work with the symbols. Now, in order for us to learn what the symbols are, let's first click on the pictures. We all know what a battery looks like. So you click and drag the battery over. Let's take one or two. Let's take two. And you can see they click together like that. And then we can utilize a wire. And another one on the side. And Let's bring the circuit down. Let's just build a quick, simple circuit. There's a switch. And another wire. And let's get a light bulb. Get it in there. And let's connect them. All right. 
Once you've built your circuit and you want to see what it looks like, you can now click on the on switch and you can see it works. So let's go back to symbols and see you've got two cells, flows from negative to positive and let's see when we click it on how it looks like. All right, you can see it just shows you the movement of the electrons. Okay, on the right hand side there shows current electrons. Let's have a look at the conventional. Goes the other way around. Okay, then have a look at the values. Two nine volts and a 10 ohm over there. Okay. This is what I want you guys to start doing first, is build a simple series circuit. Next time, we are going to do a parallel circuit. And then lastly, let's have a look at the answers of last week. All right, question one, the ruler has a negative charge because the law states that opposite charges attract. B, the small pieces of paper were attracted to the ruler. C, this happens because the ruler was negatively charged when, the, uh, when it was rubbed against the piece of uh, silk or cloth, thus allowing the positively charged particles in the tiny pieces of tissue paper to be attracted. To A, by measuring the distance between the ruler and when there is an effect on movement on the tissue paper. B, the dependent variable is the ruler or the pieces of paper. The independent variable, the different pieces of cloth or materials that were used. This is what the table looks like. And then lastly, conclusion, different types of material will have different effects on the charge of the ruler and thus the distances will vary on the pieces of tissue attracted by the ruler. Alright guys, that is it for me for this week. I'll see you again in class next week. Bye bye for now.